Second-to-second gameplay experiences is really where Dante's Inferno pays off. We have the combination of a multiple set of weapons. We've got Death Scythe, which is your big, powerful melee weapon. We've got the Holy Cross, which shoots holy magic, and it's a range attack and stun attack. You can do a lot of things with that. In addition to that, we have magic. We'll have magic powers that are on the righteous side and the unholy side. If you're in trouble and you want to like get out of the way or jump in the air or roll over the nail, whip out the side, flash the cross, all those things that lead into each other. You don't kind of have to stop, start up something else. The main thing is you have a big ass scythe in your hand. We had like two of those. It wasn't feeling right, it just felt small, puny. The scythe's the thing here, that's the most the other character in there. The scythe that Dante uses is actually death scythe. It's dark, it's evil, it's punishing, it's sharp. There's actually a lot of different modes you can go in. It could kind of have this sort of straight spear-like mode. It also has what we call sort of the collapse mode, where it's more like a scythe that's just on his wrist. At the beginning, we're all trying to find different things. We actually bought a scythe, you know, farmer's, uh, you know, monthly or whatever. So we bought this scythe. As soon as we got the scythe, the little handles like, no, this ain't gonna work. Sometimes you'll come into work and like you'll go to the kitchen and get coffee and there's just like some guy over there like with a broomstick and looking at himself in the mirror like doing this or going. Not only punishing everyone with a scythe, uh, the other part of combat is you've got a cross as well. The cross primarily is about stunning, pushing back, holding off enemies to buy yourself time. You know, it never really touches anyone physically. It's more about the power that you get from it. It's a little bit more about um, crowd control. I kind of liken it to sort of like force in Star Wars. It's really used as a great way to either set up a combo or a way to hold them in place while you then beat the shit out of them with the scythe. We really leave it open to the player whether they want to go sort of all in on the holy powers, whether they want to go all in on the powers, or do a mix of both. It's kind of a reason that Dante's got these two weapons, kind of yin and yang, kind of a dualistic because that plays out not just the combat, but in the story as well. That's the whole personality of Dante's Inferno. The most important thing to us was making sure that the combat felt awesome. One of the big things that we wanted to do in Dante's Inferno was really have the game run at 60 frames per second. 60 feels free, it feels fluid. 30 feels like you're drunk. I mean, we did some tests, you know, where we took 30 and we took 60. As soon as you go to 60, it's you just see the flow, you see the trail, the size of the behind, and you see the smoothness. Yeah. It's a visual and a tactile thing. It's how it feels, but 60 frames a second is pretty smooth. Especially with all the great new effects we got going on in the game now. Sassy. By the time you get to anger, you're kicking some ass, but don't get too comfortable. It's pretty soon. This shit's really gonna go down. Knowing the anger, which is really combat focused, you're really gonna teach your skills in that arena. Now you're gonna go into heresy, which I think will make you think about certain things that you may not normally think about in the video game. Dante starts to go wild. 